So good afternoon, it's three o'clock, it's Monday, it's Joe and Mike's virtual tours here in Scotland. We're back at South Queen's Ferry. Uh, this is due to public, uh, popular request because we didn't actually get to finish the, uh, our last tour. We didn't go into the village and if you remember the last time we were here it was blowing an absolute hooli um, and it was actually taking our breath away. Well what a difference. Uh, we had to cancel last week because of the extremely cold weather and now it's 10 degrees, it's practically, it feels like springtime, you can hear all the birds. I've um, still got a little bit of snow on the ground, um, but what a difference a day makes, because yesterday we were still under about 18 inches of snow where I live, and woke up this morning and it's all gone. Sandy Tantas says you look very smart in your suit, Joe. Do you like it? This is tweed. Yeah. It's all, I'm, I'm very Scottish, all I need is a haggis in my hand, everything I've got is made in Scotland, so there we go. So we're going to start a little tour, we're going to take you into St Andrews, at talk about St Andrews, we're going to talk about St Margaret and we're going to go into Queen's Ferry Village. Very, very popular place for tourists to come um, and also for the locals during the summertime because there's really nice fish restaurants and seafood restaurants here and for those of us who live in Edinburgh during the month of August, which is a festival month, we do like places to escape to and this is one of the local places you will come to, down here South Queen's Ferry. Now I'm just going to get Mike to swing around a wee bit and I'll show you one of our beautiful bridges here. We've got three bridges going across the river. You'll get to see the three of them in a little while. But this is the fourth rail bridge. This was built in 1890. It's the only cantilever bridge in the world, so it is unique. And have a look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it is a World Heritage Site now. Um, it got the title, a World Heritage Site title about a year and a half ago. And as you can see, the three humps. I always think of the Loch Ness Monster when I see it. It just reminds me of that indeed. Uh, I'll give you a few more facts about this. It was built in, eight, opened in 1890. It took eight years to build. And uh, there's some interesting little facts which I'll read out. I don't keep them in my head here. But in terms of the length, it is 2,467 metres in length all the way along. But if you look at the main structures, the three, three humps, it's actually 1,630. Uh, it stands in the, on the River Forth, on the Firth of Forth, and it is 137 metres high at the highest point. It took 53,000 tonnes of steel and 6.5 million rivets. And the last rivet to be put into it was put in by Queen Victoria's son, the Prince of Wales, and it was a golden rivet. Now, I don't know where that golden rivet is, but I'd like to go and see where it is. Um, it's a rail bridge, and it's used... Um, every day. There's 200 trains go across this bridge every day and it carries over the years, uh, every year, about 3 million people. When we were building it, there, was, uh, there were 60, 65 people, or sorry, 57 men lost their lives when building this and actually one of the main casings in the middle there is actually a burial ground because some of them fell into the casing and couldn't be rescued. So there are actually bodies in the casings of the bridge there as well. Now the designers uh, were John Fowler and Benjamin Baker, and there's a Mike can probably catch the train just coming over right now. We've had a we've had a question from Sandy. What does it mean, the Firth of Forth? Firth, good yeah. question. A Firth is a Scottish word for estuary. It comes from the Old Norse, for, and it's the same root as fjord, a deep gully. So Firth just means estuary. So we have the Firth of Forth. We have the Firth of Tay. We have the Firth of Clyde. So any time you see a river with the with the with the it opens into the sea, so this is opens into the North Sea, uh, we'll call it a Firth. Firth of Clyde opens into the Atlantic. Before you say anything about the history, Joe, I was just uh, going to say when I was a child, I used to think it would be such fun going over that bridge because the train would go up the humps of the bridge. Yeah. I couldn't accept the fact the train was going to go along on a horizontal track, but that was a, a child's mind at work. So. Well, I'm quite mischievous <laughs> and I've had tours and I've left people thinking that they go over like a roller coaster as well. <laughs> so there are some people who've been on my tours and still believe that the trains actually go over it like a roller coaster. It doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, there are actually toilets up there as well. Do you know that, Mike? There are toilets on the bridge there. There is a toilet. In fact, somebody did a Photoshop of one of the little toilets and guess who was in there? Bernie Saunders. Bernie Saunders. <laughs> with his mittens. Yes, with his mittens. So. <laughs> How perfect. He gets yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And then we ha when you have a, one of these jobs that's never ending, uh, in Scotland we all say it's like pont 
painting the fourth bridge because once you start, started at one end, you finished at the other, you had to come back and do it all again. However, they've now invented a new paint and the paint lasts for 20 years. So painters who had a job for life have lost their jobs. <laughs> so I can only get part-time work every 20 years now. Um, but it is an iconic structure and when people think of Paris, they think of the Eiffel Tower. When people think of New York, they think of the Statue of Liberty. And I think when you think of Edinburgh, I always think of the, the fourth bridge. I think it has become iconic. As I say, there are three bridges. We'll, you get to see the three of them. And the three bridges cross not only across the Firth, but they also cross over three centuries. Because one was built in the 19th, the rail bridge. The first road bridge was built in the 20th century and they just recently opened a new rail bridge in the 21st. So we've got three bridges crossing over the Firth of Forth. Let's take a walk into the village. I want to show you this beautiful little village um, called South Queen's Ferry. And I'm going to talk about why it's called South Queen's Ferry and link it in with St Andrew as well. Now St Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland. And indeed, if you want to go to St Andrew's, you have to go across this, this rail bridge or the cross the road bridge. You have to cross over because the landmass on the other side is the Kingdom of Fife. And it's called the Kingdom of Fife because it's an old Pictish kingdom. The Picts were the ancient people of Scotland, the ancient tribes. And uh, it's also the burial place of kings as well. So where King Malcolm and his wife, Queen Margaret, are buried there. And Robert the Bruce's body is also been buried over there. And so we refer to it. Fife as the Kingdom of Fife rather than the County of Fife. So let's walk in to the village itself. It's a very pretty little village. It's very, all the houses are very brightly painted. Uh, it's an ancient village. It actually dates back to the 1100s. And it's been the royal borough. Well, actually it goes back to the 10 hundreds because the 11th century and it is a title of a royal borough. And if you've got a title of a royal borough, it means that you can trade internationally back in the days. So there was a lot of trade going in here. And it's a real little fishing village, but I always think of smugglers' coves when I'm in here. And we mentioned on the last tour that um, it's got close relationship. With some of our writers as well. Now I want to show you some of the dates. That's, the thing about Scotland when you go through it, you'll see there's dates on, on buildings. So I just want to pick up some of the dates. This one here is 1870. You can see it above the door here. And look, you can't go anywhere in Scotland without a real fish and chips. There we go, a real Italian fish and chip shop. Closed just now, of course, but you can get uh, takeaways. Yeah. You're not, yeah, allowed, you're not allowed to, to go inside in. any of these uh, these places just now. So let's go in a little bit. We'll find a little place to stand yeah. and we'll give you some stories of South Queen's Ferry. So South Queen's Ferry is named after the Queen, Queen Margaret. And uh, she married King Malcolm. Now, Margaret has got a very interesting story behind her. She was an English princess, but she was born in exile and she was born in Hungary. And we're talking about the early 10 hundreds, so like 1050 period. And uh, when her, her family came back to England, her son, her, sorry, her brother, Edgar, was going to be uh, crowned King of England. This is after Harold, so we're talking 1066, so we're going way back. And so Edgar, her brother, was going to be crowned King. But of course, Harold lost the Battle of Hastings and William the Conqueror took over, so Edgar was not made king. He was taken over to Normandy for a while, came back to England, and then the mother, Agatha, took the kids and herself and fled up to the north of England, oh. to Northumberland, and then well, brought them up here. So Queen oh. Margaret, um, Princess Margaret came up here and just in the 10, 1060s, and uh, she met Malcolm and she married King Malcolm. She became the Queen of Scotland. She was a very, very pious woman. And when she arrived in Scotland, she arrived as, uh, Scotland was a Catholic country then. And when she arrived here, she actually started to reform the Catholic Church because she had grown up in Middle Europe. And she had been influenced by the Roman type of Catholicism, whereas here it was more of the Celtic type of Catholicism. So she started to reform the church. Now, one of the reasons she started to reform was she knew that the 
remains of St Andrew were here in Scotland. Just across the river, as we mentioned St Andrews before, the town of St Andrews, just across the river, there was a little town called Kilramont. That was its name. If you get the word kill, K-I-L, in front of a Scottish name, it usually refers to a church. So it was this, the little town was called Kilramont. And it was there they had the relics and the remains of St Andrew. The remains of St Andrew were brought over to Scotland by St Rule or St Regulus. And he had them up there. So we're talking about the, the fourth century when this, this monk, this holy man, St Regulus, who lived in Patras in northern Greece. He had a vision, and the vision was that these people were going to come from the east and destroy the holy places that they had. And his task, his mission, was to take the remains of St. Andrew. Remember, St. Andrew was one of the apostles, so he was an A-list saint. And then take his remains to the furthest point of Christendom. And the furthest point of Christendom in those days would have been Scotland. And he brought it here. So Margaret, Queen Margaret knew that they had the remains of an A-list saint. So she petitioned the Pope in Rome and she said that if they were given pilgrimage rights to St Andrew, they would build a huge cathedral. And of course the Pope said yes. And in order to get the pilgrims over to St Andrews, she had to build a ferry. So the ferry from Queen's Ferry here had been operating since the 11th century and it only finished operating in the mid-1960s. In fact, Mike was saying he remembers being on the ferry going across. That just shows you his age. He's, he's older than you think. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> and so the, the last ferry stopped in the 1960s when they opened the fourth road bridge and the Queen was on the last ferry coming back. So on this shore here, we have South Queen's Ferry and across the river, we have North Queen's Ferry. And I just wanted to show Mike here as well. I'm going to pick up some dates of these buildings here. Because if Mike looks around here, you'll see the date 1750 AD. So 1750. Now we're going to take you into some and show you some older buildings here. But South Queen's Ferry is full of ancient old buildings. You know, I'm a tourist guide as well as Joe, as you all know, of course. And I've never seen this before. So thanks to Joe, I'm uh, picking up uh, information as well. So yep. this is the, the great thing about two of us uh, working together like this. So that is just amazing. Isn't and you'll it? see yeah. the initials here. Yeah, so these yeah, are these yeah. are um, usually they're marriage lintels, and you're usually put in there when somebody gets married. They put the, the husband and the wife's name above the lintel, so you get the 1750. TB. Actually, the AD could be the name of the wife rather than, so yeah. I think it would be rather than the date here. I think that would be the wife's initials there. So, well. do you think this was a dorm, Joe? Yeah, uh, this so was, was a quite dorm. low. Yeah. Look Remember, that, people yeah. were really short in those days. Yeah, yeah. And the roads, right. they didn't have the pavements and the roads that we have nowadays. Yeah. Now, I always think of smugglers when I'm coming in here. I think of all the illicit stuff that would be smuggled in to these places because this is a major port. It's okay, you can go ahead. Yeah. Say hi, guys. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> You're not at school? Holidays. Holidays? You're never at school? <laughs> Let's go on. We'll move into the village. And I just want to see that um, the this village... This is one of the things I love is that bit, you know, that terrace bit up there. With yeah, the, the double-decker. Yeah, yeah. So this is the terrace, the double-decker terrace. And you've got the shops underneath as well. And it is gorgeous. And street lamps they have here as well. The colours, you know, are just... Uh, Amazing, different houses painted in the different colours. Now this is quite common in Scotland yeah. with the fishing yeah. villages because you go to some of the islands you'll see some of the um, gaily painted little houses there and it's very welcoming for when the fishermen and the sailors are coming back in and if you go along some of the villages across the river again you get all these lovely prettily painted little yeah. villages. It's quite a Scottish thing. Let's move further in to the village. So going back to Queen Margaret, Queen Margaret uh, was a very, very pious woman. So petitioning the, the Pope in Rome, she built this, her and her husband built this huge cathedral in St Andrews dedicated to St Andrew himself. St Andrew the patron saint of Scotland. She was also known as being down with the people. Um, there are stories of Queen Margaret coming out of the castle uh, in Edinburgh, where she lived in Edinburgh Castle and coming out, she'd actually, she's known for washing the feet of the poor. 
and it was about 200, maybe 250 years later that she was actually sanctified and made a saint. So she became, from Queen Margaret, she became Saint Margaret. They built a shrine to her over in the town of Dunfermline, which is just across the river, where her and her husband are buried. Um, she died in Edinburgh Castle, and she died you know, a few days after when she found out that her husband had died in battle. Um, they buried her and her husband in the priory or the abbey in, in Dunfermline, the same place where Robert the Bruce, his body, is also buried. However, during the Reformation, um, we lost the remains of uh, Queen Margaret, St. Margaret, and there was a shrine to her there. It actually is said that Mary, Queen of Scots, had the skull of St. Margaret. Sounds very gruesome. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I was just going to chip in because uh, I used to teach uh, art in the high school here at South Queen's Ferry, and I remember the kids used to talk about the cool people that stayed here, and a couple were Jim Kerr from That's Simple right. Minds and Chrissy Hind because they were actually married, they were married for a wee while and they stayed here in South Queen's Ferry. Well yeah. I actually went, I was at a, a, one of the musicians, Ali Bain, came down to play and a friend of mine knows Ali Bain and we met Jim Kerr and wow. Ali Bain the musician because they were doing a session together. Look at the kids all queuing up for the sweeties and ice cream. Yeah, nice composition there, so uh, queuing up for the <laughs> coffee or ice cream or whatever, yeah. yeah. So moving further into oh, look the village. At this uh, sun highlighting the boats over there. Yeah. I know, it's great. So we'll just walk in, we'll get a good view yeah. in the pavement here. Over to the. Now, a lot of the ships you can see across the river here, this is a naval, uh, uh, a naval base, and this is where they built the two of the largest aircraft carriers that we have in the British fleet, were actually built in this yard across here. Of course, during the Second World War, this was a major target for the Luftwaffe. And the Luftwaffe tried to bomb the rail bridge every night. And uh, the bridge survived the whole war intact because this was the major link to the Northern Fleet, taking all the uh, supplies and ammunition up to the Northern Fleet. Um, so the Luftwaffe would try to bomb this every night. And in fact, I think the first plane that was ever shot down by the Luftwaffe was shot down here in the River Forth. They had barrage balloons and everything to keep the, you know, uh, to protect the bases, I think. Yeah. So this was a major uh, area which uh, they wanted to target because and of the building. And, and uh, during buildings. the celebrations, uh, I think it was the 250th anniversary of the bridge, they actually had a dogfight between a uh, uh, German measuresmith and a Spitfire, and they were dancing, chasing each other over the bridge. I don't know if you saw that, but it was one of the, the celebrate, to celebrate, commemorate the, the, one of the anniversaries of the bridge being built. Yeah, we've got uh, Neil Young is saying geyser has got a wine called Hot Pot Wind, uh, something to do with the fishermen. Uh, thanks, Neil Young, for that one. That, is that uh, Neil Young and yeah, from yeah. Canada? Could be. Real Neil Young? <laughs> <laughs> Th thanks Thank for you, the Neil. engagement, folk. We're really loving your comments and questions. So keep, yeah, them, keep coming. them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the houses I want to talk about here is this black house here. It's called the Black Castle. We've got a wee bit closer to it. And it's got some mysterious and quite macabre stories to it as well. So the house itself dates back to 1626, I believe is a date in the house and it's called the Black Castle although as you can see it's not a castle itself and if we got a little bit closer to it give you a better idea behind it now this was owned by a chap he was a captain in well it's in the Navy oh. and it's yeah. uh, you can see that actually, you can see the dates up here, 1626 is the date on top there. And above this, in the middle window at the top, I've got the initials of William Lowry and his wife, Marion Speddy. Now he was, a, as I said, he was a captain of a supply ship and he would be supplying uh, grain to the troops in Northern Ireland. And uh, however, his brother's wife did not like him at all. They didn't like William Lowry. 
and she paid a beggar woman to put a hex on the ship. And the ship subsequently sunk, sank and William and his crew lost their lives. So the word got out that uh, it was his sister-in-law who actually paid to put a hex on it. So the brother, so William's brother, actually had to then to pay to have his wife and the woman who put the hex on it burnt at the stake for witches. Because remember, eight, when you go back to 1626, this was just about a year after King James VI of Scotland had died. King James VI of Scotland became James I of England. He was the king that first united the countries under the same crown after Elizabeth I mm -hmm. had died in England. James VI literally wrote the book about witchcraft. And I mean literally wrote the book about witch, uh, witchcraft. In fact, the book is still available. If you ever come back to Scotland and go on tour, I'd love to take you to a little uh, village called Inner Pefri. Oh, Mike, you want to take a look at this now with the sun shining on the, on the bridge here? Beautiful. Oh yeah, the light is especially it's good Special today. light at the moment. Uh, I've got a question, how close is this to sky? Uh, uh, we're a couple of hundred miles from Sky. Sky's on the northwest coast, we're in the east coast. We're in the southeast of Scotland. Sky's on the northwest of Scotland, on the northwest coast. But it's linked. The sky is also linked to the mainland by a bridge now. It's beautiful, isn't it, today? It's Especially beautiful. Uh, another thing that people ask me, I don't know, probably the same with you, Joe, is these coast step gables. And uh, there's all sorts of uh, reasons why they are in steps. And I think. Uh, the thing I read recently was it was just an easy way to finish off a roof. Yep. And they had seen this in the Netherlands and uh, just uh, Im imported it here. As simple as that, it just was easy to finish off. Yep, and, it's, and also yeah. there's a very, very close relationship between the east coast of Scotland and the low countries, the Netherlands, uh, the Benelux countries as well. So a lot yeah. of trade went on. Yep. So this little house here called the Black Castle, of course, you cannot have a house like this without having a ghost story and apparently there is a hidden staircase in there although people who've been living in there right up for, for, for hundreds of years still have not found it but apparently there is a tunnel or was a tunnel that led from the house right down to the shore and this is where the smuggling would take place so the brother-in-law had to pay for his wife and the witch that was put, put a hex on him to uh, be burnt at the stake and he actually got bankrupted <laughs> It was a sad story, um, but the brother of Willie, who owned his house, actually got bankrupted because he had to pay for his own wife and as the, the witch to be burned at the stake. And it was said that it was actually the witch finder, who was a reverend of the, of the Church of Scotland over here, who actually had wanted to live in his house, and apparently he was the one that accused the sister-in-law of being a witch. It's a tough time in those days of being called a witch. She said, if you were called a witch, you just get out of town. There's no way you can defend yourself. You know you're going to end up at the stake. And as I mentioned before, um, there's a beautiful ancient little library. I think it's the oldest lending library in the world. And it's in a little village up near Perth. And uh, when you come over to Scotland, Mike and I, if you're with Mike and I, we would hope for lovely to take you up there. And you get to handle all these ancient books. It's a gorgeous little place. It's a little secret place in a little village called Inner Pefri. It's not even a village, it's a hamlet. So let's move further along through the village. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the views. Yeah, we're getting lots of great comments here. Um, thanks very much, guys. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Now, I want to show you this. I mean, this to me is like a smuggler's cove. So we've got the castle, Black Castle goes back to 1626. So we're talking about the early reign of Charles I. And the, you know, but the people who owned these houses would have grown up under the reign of James VI of Scotland, who then took his whole entourage down to London when he became the king of England I've got England a comment from Scotland. Margie, one of the Outlander tour people, and she's... Uh, uh, wanting me to remind her of the name of the character who was a witch. It was Gellis Duncan. Gellis, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gellis Duncan, yeah. And have a look at this pub here, though, this inn. This, this is just like a smuggler's inn as far as, you know, the history of this one. 1683. So you just imagine the ships that would be birthed here in the, at, the, at the ferry itself. This is called the Ferry Tap. And then on the other side, behind us here, 
Uh, there used to be a distillery that distilled whiskey here in South Queensferry. It doesn't exist anymore, but they do distill gin. And there's a little gin distillery just here. So it's called, you know, it's called Harpal Harpalian Spirits. I think that's how you pronounce it, Harpalian. I'm not going to be done on that one, I'm <laughs> <not sure. laughs> And this is a little, shows you the distillery here. So it's got the bow, B-O-E with an umla above it, bow gin. Apple and lime gin, Scottish gin. Very nice. So let's move along. This is the high street we're on now. Let's move further along and we'll get to the town hall. You really do feel you're going back in time, don't you? It when is. you're walking along here. It's and, a beautiful uh, little time capsule. And, and I think the people who live here are really lucky. Um, the views they get oh, off the river and off the bridges. I mean, you can never get tired of the view of the fourth rail bridge. It's one of these iconic pictures. And also, you know, there's little beaches here. So the locals will go out into the, into the water here. When we were much younger, um, might, you might remember this, we used to go muscle, muscle, collecting mussels from the beach here. And we used to take the water from the river and boil it on an open fire and throw the mussels in and eat them. Yeah. Poor, man's, poor man's fare. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> much sought after mussels today. Yeah. Although nowadays I don't think I'd very much eat the ones from here because there's a big petrochemical site further up the river. And, and there are warnings not to eat the shellfish from the shore here. You'll end up with a sore tummy if you do. Now, each of the, t each of the little villages in Scotland have their own little quirks and they have their own little festivals and one of the festivals they hear is the festival of the Burry Man, B-U-R-R-Y. Now some people say that comes from the Royal Borough because this is a, a Royal Borough, this is the Royal Borough of South Queensferry. Um, but this, what happens is the guy, they get whoever's nominated to be the Burry Man puts on a suit and they put burrs. You know the burrs you get from plants like teasels, sticky willies we used to call them, um, like almost like from the thistles, etc. And they stick them on them. So they throw all these little burrs on them. He's got the suit and he's covered in all these burrs. And he's got to go from one end of the village to the other. And I think he's got to have a drink every, in every house. So by the time he gets to the end of the village, he's in a pretty sorry state. Got a wee question. What yep. is the warmest time to visit Scotland? <laughs> Do we have a warmest time? <laughs> July, June, July and August are usually the best times to visit. Um, mainly because the days are really long here in summertime. Um, in June, it doesn't get dark till about 11 o'clock. So you can get real good. Oh, look. Cat. There we go. You get a picture of your look. cat. <laughs> What's the cat's name? Kit Kat. Kit Kat. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Look at Kit Kat. Hey, we see, look at this. Look, <laughs> I told you these villages have got all the real weird things going on. <laughs> Cheers. That's I take the car out for a walk. That's right. amazing, yeah, you yeah. know. It's like what you see when you walk around the streets of Scotland, it's always amazing. That she was taking a car out for a walk. How lovely. Right. So the Borough Festival, um, each little town in Scotland has its own little festival and its own little... Um, folklore and stories that go with it. Yes, I, I knew somebody that did the Burry Man and he told me he was an ex-pupil of mine and said he's, the suit is sewn up and they ply him with alcohol, alcohol. on this route and have to support him because he just gets more and more inebriated. But uh, it is a bit of a problem when he has to go and relieve himself because he's completely sewn <laughs> into, into the, the suit. suit so. yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the little alleyways here. I do, again, I just think of the smugglers' coves that all went along all, all along the east coast of Scotland. But I want to point out this beautiful building here, um, which is the town hall. The clock itself was uh, put up here on the Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1887. But the building itself is a lot older than that. And I want to take you a little sign here. We will cross over. The thing I like, love about the restaurants here, Mike, 
is that wherever restaurant you're in, you get a clear view right through the restaurant. So you're never short of getting a view. You can see the bridge right through the restaurant there. You know, I, I, I played for a wedding here and it was down the stairs and they just got married with that view I know. behind them, you know. It's stunning, it's, it's stunning. Incredible. Yeah. So the old, old town hall dates back to 1817. And it was a gift from the magistrate. And here we have, by the magistrate and town council in gratitude for the liberality and kindness of Archibald John, Earl of Rosebery, provost of this borough, to whom the inhabitants are indebted for a bleaching green and the supply of water. So good old the Earl of Rosebery, good for him. Archibald, that's a great Scottish name as well. Isn't that, isn't that what... Um, uh, Angel, uh, um, uh, what's the name? The prince's son, son's called Archie? The, sorry? Isn't the prince's son called Archie? Yes. Prince? Uh, prince Harry. Harry. His son's called Harry, Archibald. Yeah. 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 And I believe they're expecting another baby. Yes. So uh, I heard, yeah, so yeah, I heard today. Yeah. So the provost here is a Scottish word for mayor. So you, so you get the provost, it'll be the mayor. Um, you'll see that in Scotland. So in Edinburgh, we have the Lord Provost as well. And you see the insignia here. 1817. So this would have been the fresh water coming out here. Yeah. Um, so someone was asking how much a house would cost here. Well, it's very much um, the same price as, as Edinburgh. So a uh, three bedroom house being the range of, um, I would say £350,000. But if you wanted a river view, and the, and the view, they'd probably be a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you some of the apartments down here as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually go down into the Mandy, port itself. Mandy is saying she lived here for 20 plus years. Oh, really? So you then she'll know how much the houses are. Hi. So we mentioned uh, Queen Margaret, hence the Queen's Ferry, but her brother was Edgar, and further up the river we have Port Edgar, and uh, named after her brother. And he was the one who was supposed to be King of England, but never became King of England. Uh, he was basically deposed by William the Conqueror when he came over and defeated Harold at the Battle of Hastings, which is supposed to be the only time that Britain has ever been invaded by a foreigner, by a foreign nation, 1066. That's the security of being an island, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to take you around here and we'll get a good view of the other bridges. But there's some lovely apartments just down here at, at the little marina. The sun is shining stunningly on the bridge at the moment. If you might can just look under the bridge, further beyond the bridge, you'll see there's a, a lot of boats there. That is actually a petrol terminal. This is where the tankers come in and load up with the North Sea oil, which is just under the first hump. There's a there train, go. train going yeah. over the bridge there. Nice reflections on the water. Yeah. Beautiful. There's a lovely house here. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this is the main rail route that links Aberdeen in the north right down to London. Uh, so that's the, one of the main East Coast rail routes here for the whole, runs the whole length basically of the United Kingdom itself, of Great Britain. There's lovely apartments here, a lovely house here, I think Mike can pick that out. That's just gorgeous. What a view. Yeah, everything's geared to get that view. Yeah. I know, paying an awful lot of money for that one. <clears throat> now let's walk down onto the actual little pier itself and we'll show you some of the other bridges. And if anyone's got any questions, now your time to ask. Oh, um, we've got another uh, <coughs> message that the video is frozen, though you c we can be heard. Okay. So hopefully we will uh, unfreeze. <laughs> yeah. And it should open, the, the video should come on again <coughs> when we come into the open here. Yeah. Now at the moment, a lot of the ports are um, being used to store or keep the
cruise ships which ply their way up and down the river and all around the country here. So obviously there's no cruising going on, but if Mike can maybe can pick out the port across the, across the river there, yeah. you'll see there's uh, quite a few of the cruise ships and even further up. Now Mike and I do come and meet here regularly when uh, during the summertime when we have tourists who come by boat. Uh, we'll come down here and pick up some people from the cruise ships and take them on a tour and then they come back and join their ship in the in the evening as well and you know it's funny joe and i suppose you've got the same because people when they come back having been up to edinburgh castle and seen the history of edinburgh uh, will be heading back to cruise ship and uh, i've got the habit now of saying now wait a minute you want to go and have a look at south queen's ferry because you'd be missing a lot if you miss that because yep. 17th century buildings that we've just been walking yep. by there yeah i know because a lot of people would just come here get on a bus go up to this up to the city come back again usually they've got a reason if they're going to the edinburgh military tattoo then that's fine to go and see a show but i do sometimes say spend some time in the village here as well it's really pretty to walk around here and also you get great fish and chips we do get a lot of people who come to scotland to say i want some fish and chips you get great fish and chips here uh, yeah. in South Queensferry. Now we've got the two rail road bridges on the other side here. <clears throat> we've got the first one you can see is the the FRB, the fourth road bridge. And that was opened in the 1960s, that was opened by the Queen. And then further beyond is the Queensferry crossing and that was opened in the early 21st century, so about was it 2015 it opened up? And also, that was also opened by the Queen almost 50 years after the first road bridge got opened as well. And that opened up the links. And when the first road bridge got opened, that was when the ferry between North and South Queen's Ferry actually finished. So it had been plying a ferry here going back to the, from the 11th century right up to the 20th century. They've been having a ferry here. And also they used to have uh, the train ferries where the trains would come down here, go on to a boat, the train would come down from Edinburgh, go on a boat, then cross over and join the rail before they actually built the rail bridge as well. So this place is full of history. We love taking you here. And also when the weather improves and when the restrictions are lifted, uh, Mike and I are going to take you up to places like Dunfermline and Stirling and St Andrews so yeah. although we're mentioning them um, you will get to see them as well so stick with us as we go around the country and there's more to see in Edinburgh itself we haven't even covered half of Edinburgh yet so we've still got a lot to cover in Edinburgh um, but we are looking to expand our tours and take you across the river but uh, restrictions should be getting lifted fairly shortly because this is supposed to be Good News Monday do you know that Mike? This is officially is Good News right. Monday, that's what it's oh, called. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so yeah. the news is getting better here in Scotland. Um, the vaccine has been rolled out quite rapidly now. Mike's had his injection. He jumped yes, the queue. Yes. And, uh, and uh, the restrictions should be getting lifted quite shortly. And when that happens, we will happily um, expand our tours across the river as well. We'll go to places like Stirling. We've got so many places earmarked that we want to show you. We're going to go to the Kelpies. Uh, we've got the Pineapple. We've got all these places that we want to share with you. So I hope you've enjoyed your tour today.